by leveraging the power of AI, I think we can leapfrog on many counts. Only those fund managers who will use AI and ML to better themselves will be able to probably fight against AI and ML. And hence, they have to reskill themselves for what an AI-enabled world would look like. Kasparov played Deep Blue in 96, he could win 4-2. 97, Deep Blue defeated Gary Kasparov. Eventually, AI and ML will conquer fund management. And only those fund managers who will use AI and ML to better themselves will be able to probably fight against AI and ML. As far as Gen AI is concerned, a lot of talk about what they can do and there are some very specific areas where it, you know we can see the difference. Jobs which require escalation where you carry a certain specific knowledge which you have gained over a period of time, which can be gleaned from documents, which can be gleaned from data sources, jobs of that nature, wherever you can create rules and the rules are well understood. A lot of those jobs can potentially go away. AI is as transformational as internet was. And that's a big statement because we know how internet changed the world. It changed businesses, it changed society. By leveraging the power of AI, I think we can leapfrog on many counts. And variety of challenges that society is facing, I think they can be addressed very well. Recognizing the role of AI examining possibilities of how that could impact your industry and how do you make your organization ready, how prepared are your people for that, letting people know that that would be a massive change in their lives and hence they have to reskill themselves for what an AI-enabled world would look like. When computers first burst upon India, there was a section of the state-owned banks that felt that this is going to lead to job losses. You've seen the reverse happening. Those productive gains that you got actually enabled people to focus on selling skills, creating a product suite and a services suite for their customers. Similarly, AI, I think, is going to be another big game changer. A lot of repetitive tasks are really what the machines are going to be doing for us. I think in the case of AI, ML, and generative AI, your guardrails are something that we should be thinking about first, even as we harness the positive energy of these new developments. I think what really is going to change in this new data-driven artificial intelligence uh, sort of capable organization is essentially going to be the ability to analyze all of this data that we've got inside the company in real time. Earlier, you could still analyze the data, but all of that was done in kind of batch mode. But today, with the capabilities of processing data and with the capabilities of understanding the data, you are able to discern patterns or inferences from data in real time, almost prompting people to make decisions based on that inference or that analysis in real time. I think we are going to find organizations that will play it uh, sort of hard. Uh, they will be number crunched, uh, very hard-nosed organizations and taking decisions based on data. On the other hand, you will see more consumer-centric organization look at this data as a means to get closer to the customer. I think the softer qualities will become even more important because as the harder things like intelligence and data and all becomes more a hygiene factor, they'll become t uh, table stakes. Like in Edelweiss, we always say that it's going to be, I think out-analyzing competition is going to be a given, but out-behaving competition is going to be a skill set that you need to have. It's the same thing about IQ and EQ. Yeah, I think leaders don't have to have very high IQ, but they need to have very high EQ. So I think the softer aspects of, uh, of leadership, of the, the qualities that any CEO or any CXO needs to have will become even more important.